Hello, I'm Mary Marinville, and I'm excited today because I am interviewing Jan Burt from San Miguel Produce, which is located on the Oxnard Plain in Oxnard. Hello, Jan. How are you today? Very good. Nice Correct. to have you here, Mary. Oh, thank you. Can you tell me a little bit about the history of San Miguel Produce? I know you have a very rich history with agriculture mm -hmm. and your uh, involvement with San Miguel and what you do here. San Miguel Produce started a little over 35 years ago. Um, we are family owned. Um, Roy Nishimori, my partner and husband, uh, founded the company back in the early 70s. And he is a third generation farmer. He's uh, Japanese American, has kind of an interesting and rich history. Um, and they used to grow before coming to Oxnard down in the Long Beach area and then basically when basically Cal Los Angeles area had a lot of farming at that time. and. Over the years, you know, um, growth of housing and particularly post-war um, really sort of infiltrated Los Angeles area and, and people started to look for new mm -hmm. locations to farm. Mm -hmm. And so the family came here in the late 1950s and um, have been here ever since. Right. So one of the big difficulties is encroachment of the urban area. Yes. And I hear that time and time again from farmers in Ventura County. But we're not going to let what happened in Los Angeles County happen here. You pointed out behind us there's a beautiful mm -hmm. uh, historic older uh, photograph. Mm -hmm. And you were explaining that that is uh, San Miguel right there. Right. And the surrounding area. Can you tell us a little bit about the surrounding area? and what has happened uh, over the years? Speaking of encroachment. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are actually currently right now surrounded by the Magoo um, Navy base as well as the Air National Guard. Uh, the Navy base, of course, came here in, during World War II and has been here ever since. In the late 1980s, the Air National Guard was looking for a new location for a base. Um, and right next to our location here, we have about 200 acres, or had, I should say, 200 acres adjacent to our facility here. Um, it was beautiful land. It's near the ocean. It's got that coastal climate. It's, you know, great. Perfect for growing things. Perfect for growing things, but it was also perfect for an airport. Mm -hmm. So the Air National Guard uh, took that over um, for, by eminent domain in the late uh, 1980s. And mm -hmm. so now we're, we're sort of surrounded by the two naval bases, which is fine, but it's... Uh, it can get a little noisy sometimes, and um, it works out. But it's it's just a unfortunate, you know, progress seems to and come in. Face and let's face it, it farmland is a little bit more uh, conducive in this area for the weather and the Mediterranean climate yes. than a naval air base. But but yeah. we, we all have to get a, we all have to get <laughs> we along. Have to get along yes. And you explain that now because your two hundred acres. Mm -hmm. Uh, got uh, dwindled down. You're, you are you have 21 ranches around the county. Can you talk a little bit about sure. about um, that? Most of the land the land that we do farm is leased. Um, mm -hmm. So we rent from different farmers or, or family owner properties around the county. 21 acre 21 ranches rather, uh, a little over oh, about 1,100 acres, maybe two, two, 1,200 acres. Some of, about 20% of that is organic. Um, mm -hmm. The balance is conventional. Um, we specialize in the dark leafy greens, and mm -hmm. all, so all of those properties are growing the specialty greens, as, as I, like, I like to call them, which is the chards, kales, three different types of kales, collards, mustards, turnips, um, uh, dandelions. Most, in many cases, they're oh, considered wow, weeds. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> weeds, but they are considered weeds and they are um, um, specialty crop, if, if, if you will. Right. And um, we also grow a variety of Asian vegetables like bok choy and And, and that fishes. is under the jade, the That's cut the and jade. clean, mm -hmm. but it's all under the umbrella of San Miguel Correct. produce. Correct. Okay. Yes. So we have different brands for the different varieties that are, are pertinent to the product. Cut mm -hmm. and clean is very literal to the products that it is cut clean greens. So mm -hmm. it's very literal to the name, just like Cheerios is Cheerios. So right. we try to, to be to make the products and the brands most more user friendly and descriptive. Jade on the other hand is is because of Asians consider jade a very precious uh, mineral and gem. We've we wanted it to have that appeal to the Asian community as well as to the American community to make it more friendly to try some of the Asian varieties because 
they are becoming more mainstream, and they too are very, very nutrient dense, just like the dark leafy greens. And right. So, and they're fun to try. They are very fun to try. I had um, the opportunity of trying them at, and I'm a big leafy green good. kale eater, That's good. but I had the opportunity to try them at the Ventura County Fair. You oh, gave yes. some sampling, and I got to try oh, them right. with Roy, your husband. <laughs> yes, so right. that was very exciting. Mm -hmm. And I do want you to know that I do explain to the kids in the classrooms that not all leafy greens are alike mm -hmm. on nutritional value. Mm -hmm. The iceberg lettuce is at one end right. and kale nutrition wise with their vitamin A content is way at the other end of the spectrum. So I am I am t explaining that to the kids. I want you to know that That's great. they're not all equal. No, they're not. And kids don't understand that because they see leafy green and they think it's all good all for the them, same. but some are more uh, nutritious than others. Absolutely. Chard and the kale. And they it is delicious. And the kids in the class are able to recognize now kale as opposed to chard and some oh, other wow, things, which is great. which is exciting. That so, is what exciting. is your main uh, job here? What do you love to do? What are you passionate about? And and what what do you spend your day doing here? As a small company, we wear a lot of hats. We, and, and since we are not only the grower of all of these leafy greens, but we also process and put them, wash them, chop them, put them in a package mm -hmm. for consumers so that they're ready to eat. So you don't because typically these greens can be very labor intensive, dirty, and, mm -hmm. uh, and it's sort of a barrier for wanting to want to even bother to 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 prepare them. So. Mm -hmm. By having them be a little more convenient, people will eat them more often. So um, as a vertically integrated company from the seed all the way to, to, the, to the store, because we have direct relationships with the retailers as well, mm -hmm. um, it, we're very busy wearing a lot of different hats around here. So mm -hmm. um, typically my primary role is the sales and marketing. Um, we are, you know, deal with a lot of different customers all throughout the United States and into even Canada. And um, we, that keeps us jumping, of course. And mm -hmm. so we are, we're, all, but my favorite part, I would say, you know, even though I, it's, it's, it's all obviously keeping up with the day to day and doing everything that needs to get done to, to, to make sure that our customers and our consumers are happy with our products. Mm -hmm. um, I think that my favorite part of, um, of this job is, being involved with something that's very nutritious mm -hmm. and very healthy and people have to eat and, mm -hmm. and why not be in a, in, a, in a job that you can wear jeans every day and <laughs> you can make sure you walk home every day and you think, okay, I'm making people healthy every day. You are feeding people. Right. There's nothing to be there's more nothing special, but more special about that. No, yeah. where there's food, I always say where there's food, there's love. Yep. And, and uh, you, to, to be a farmer, you have to love Absolutely. what you do you because you've it. got the good years and the bad and the years. Times. And, and so then my, my other aspect of the thing that I love the most is just taking those things and, and saying, because we grow unusual items. It's not like you said, lettuce, that people are familiar with. So with having these unique items and trying to make them more friendly, creating new products, creating salads, trying to introduce um, different varieties and blends to make them more appealing to consumers so that people aren't afraid to try them. Right. Well, I have to say, you had quite a line at the Ventura County Fair and these were main stream Ventura County consumers that that never had tried kale or chard right. and they were trying it with uh, sesame oil dressing yeah. and mm -hmm. they were trying to go back for more right so that's it, good that was a big success yeah, yeah so well, I, there's a lot of fried food at the fair so it's nice to have something a little more healthy in between all that wonderful fried stuff. Your too. <laughs> booth was very popular and I was glad to be right there by it because I learned a lot as That's well good. about That's the dressing good. and the recipes and um, and making, you said earlier about making your products uh, consumer friendly and mm -hmm. easy. That is so key right now is mm -hmm. making it as easy as possible because so many people are busy, so busy and you really care about your customers. I know you do and you want them to eat better and mm -hmm. sometimes to get them to eat better you have to help them out. Yes and, and, and recipes help and, and, and making food fun. Mm -hmm. I think that some of the things that, like at the fair we did, we did um, 
kale smoothies with mm -hmm. with, with mm -hmm. lemonade. So we made it, we called it a kale aid. And um, so it was a bit tart, but it was refreshing. I tried that too. It was delicious. I was trying everything. I was, it was, it was good. That's good. Um, and even kale chips for young people. I mean, it's a healthy uh, alternative. You can make them at home. Uh, you can bake them in the oven, and, and it's a healthy alternative to potato chips. So there's, there are, and you can make Endless. chips with any greens. Endless. Uh, yes, absolutely. There's a lot of fun things that it doesn't have to be the same old, same old. Right. You know. And I'm seeing more chopped salads, too, when they yeah. add kale yep. in yep. with the romaine or yep. with another green. Or a slaw. Or a slaw. Yep. Um, I do want to talk to you now about... People have a very romantic association with farming, and I do as well. When we think of farms, we think of the red barn, we think of the road crops or the orchards. And for the most part, a lot of farms are still that way. But it's the 21st century now, it's the year 2012, and they don't. a lot of people don't realize that farming can be romantic and it is an amazing industry, but there's also a lot of difficulties with the fact that the population, we have seven billion people on the planet, and farmers are producing more and more food than they've ever had to produce before. Um, before. And I know from friends that are that are organic farmers, mm -hmm. that it's, uh, you said 20% of your farm is organic. Mm -hmm. What kind of uh, challenges, challenges <laughs> obstacles, hurdles yeah. do you yeah. have when you're uh, farming organic? Organic is, is an is a animal unto itself. Um, there are more, there's more work that needs to be, uh, uh, well, is involved, actually. Um, more labor? More labor, because there's not a lot of um, um, chemicals, or biochemicals, I should say, um, and, and items that we can use to prevent pests, to prevent weeds. Um, so our tools, I guess our toolbox is limited. Mm -hmm. So, and that's okay, mm -hmm. we, you know, it's the right thing to do and we work through it and so therefore the cost is higher and the yields are lower. Um, we have a current situation which is sort of extraordinary this past year that I think many, and many of the leafy green and, and coal crops, uh, br brassica farmers if you will, have had to deal with is a new bug that actually had, has arrived here about four years ago. but. Um, we really didn't see the devastation that we've had this since this past year. In this past summer, it, it came on with a vengeance. It was almost like the perfect storm. It mm -hmm. was, um, it's a bug that um, loves heat. It loves our environment. That it, it loved this summer. And they've loved our crops. And mm -hmm. so um, a lot of farmers I've talked to have had to disc under um, a number of their crops and are really even considering whether or not they're going to grow these same crops next year because mm -hmm. it... it it, um, and the name of the bug is? Oh, I'm sorry, yes, the Bagrata. The Bagrata, yeah. okay. It came from South Africa. Um, I'm not sure exactly which, how, what path it took to get here, but it's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's over the past four years, it's been kind of growing in its spread, not only around the country, but particularly here, it really um, was a devastating um, um, plague, if you will, to a number of our farmland and farmers um, and our crop, we lost 25 acres. 25, 25 that's acres. significant. And that's just the, the crops that we totally lost. We have mm -hmm. almost any of our other fields because all of the gr greens that we grow, it loves. Mm -hmm. So we have lot reduced our yields on a number of our, our farm um, uh, ranches, but um, we're fighting the fight and doing whatever we can. And we're, we've got to figure out a way to beat it because mm -hmm. we have so much invested into this particularly special specialty crop mm -hmm. and um, we can't just say next year we're going to grow something different right because so now you've uh, your got, consumers have expectations right, if you right. were able to supply them with this certain specialty crop they mm -hmm. want it again especially when right. you're training the consumers to eat better and right. you you get them in that direction right. And with the, all the packaging and all of the you know 15 years or so that we've been doing the the packaging side of it, we can't just stop it. We have to, um, mm -hmm. we really do have to hit it head on. And we're looking at all the different possible solutions. But not only do we deal with those types of unique sort of situations that are challenging in the farming industry, but um, just labor, getting people to work in the on the farms, um, that's a big issue with us. Regulations in California are very mm -hmm. difficult to to deal with. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, I think that um, you know, it, it, farming is 
is a 24-hour job. The plants don't stop growing. Right. So you, you, if you get into this field, you have to be prepared that you're going to probably work six days a week. You're probably going to, or even more sometimes, depending on the season. Mm -hmm. I, I, I grew up on a farm. I never saw my father except for sun, yeah. Sunday. There you go. <laughs> see? So it's, and it's some, to some people, that's a, you know, that's a, too much work, mm -hmm. and, um, but there's a great reward. Um, it is that the people that are in the farming industry are very down to earth, mm -hmm. um, wonderful to work with because we all have to deal with the same issues and we help each other out. And so there's a there's Com a, there's camaraderie, a, there's a very unique camaraderie that you don't get in many other industries that mm -hmm. um, are very special. And I think that. Um, you know, we uh, we work together and band together when we have to deal with these kinds of situations like the bag rat or what have you. But um, it's it's a worthwhile industry, and I'm hoping that more young people will look to it as a an, an as an interest for their careers. I'm well. trying to change that. Good in Ventura County, and hopefully, it's going to. Uh, uh, go the waves will go out even further than Ventura County. I do I think that there is a great interest more so now, especially with the local movements and, and the people wanting to know where their food comes from. It seems like we're starting to see more young people interested in, in, in looking at trying to get involved in volunteering for internships and such. And so we're, we're, our door is always open for those types of things. And, okay. and if anybody's ever That's interested, That's good to hear. Love to have those. Oh, people, especially the youth, want to know where their food comes from and the journey of their food from mm -hmm. field to table. Mm -hmm. I'm convinced now more of that than ever after four years of teaching them. Okay. They are very, very interested and That's want great. to know. One last thing is about your soil. Mm -hmm. I promised um, someone I would ask, uh, because again, I have a friend that's an organic farmer, and sure. with all the safety issues surrounding food safety, food safety with uh, agriculture, soil. Are you trying to be organic in your twenty percent? Do you have any um, concerns over soil and soil uh, issues right now? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you're alluding to, but I th the soil that we, I, just in general, soil here in Ventura County is some of the richest soil we have in the country. The use of manure, oh, I, I think see. they were more. <laughs> oh, I, from a food safety manure, and yes, that is an issue. And that is something that we, over the decades and decades, have uh, the, have moved away from. Okay. All farmers have moved away from that for a lot of different reasons. Mm -hmm. Not to say that it can't be safe, but it has to be treated properly and it has to be uh, dealt with properly. One of the things that um, we, we choose not to use um, manure. We do use um, um, chicken manure sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, we do use uh, a variety of uh, fish mm -hmm. uh, as well and, and some of these types of things. But uh, we have to be very, very careful because this food safety is top of mind. And the last thing we want is for anybody to get ill. Right. And, you know, the, now... now um, it's not to say that necessarily people are getting ill more often these days. In fact, it's probably quite the contrary, that people are actually healthier mm -hmm. and eat, getting healthier food and safer food than they ever have. It's just that now we can trace back. We're better at tracing where people get ill from and mm -hmm. what people get ill from because of technology and our instant ability to communicate through technology as well as packaging. Mm -hmm. Before, if you bought a bunch, you're not sure where it came from. You just got sick. Right, but now so you know. now you know. And, and they so, can trace it back. And they can trace it back. And so those of us who choose to get into the packaging side, we have to be extra diligent and extra rigorous about how we deal with our food safety um, 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 programs that are not only in the field, but also in the plant. And that's why buying domestically and buying locally and really knowing where your food comes from mm -hmm. is so important, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, besides the greens, you are my October farmer of the month and the harvest of the month is beets yeah. and you grow uh, quite a bit of beets. Yes, and where can we find the beets that you grow? Which um, retailers or which... Well, most of them, actually, you, if our beet bulbs and leafy tops will probably be found in most of your local Vons or your Ralphs, um, okay, great. Albertsons, um, Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. um, we are coming out with a new salad that actually includes beet greens, the tops of them. Nice, so delicious. It's a spinach and beet green salad called Iron Man because of all the iron in beets. Mm -hmm. And um, 
It will be showing up in the Vons store here in Southern California after the first of the year. Okay, so, so you, we're excited about so that. So that's wonderful. Congratulations. Yeah. So, so don't be afraid to try the tops of your beets because they're delicious. Okay, so not only can you roast beets and put right. them in the salad or boil beets, right. which and, are delicious, which are delicious yeah. but now you can eat the beet greens and, sh and Jan is saying their iron content is very high yeah. and you can find them at your local Vons mm -hmm. and your website. If people want to know more about your history, Mm -hmm. and your company, they can go to San Miguel Produce and cut, yes. and, and cut and clean. Either one. It'll take you to either one. If it's San Miguel, you Google San Miguel Produce or uh, Cut and Clean Greens, you'll, uh, you'll make it to our website. And we have a, about a little over 100 recipes as well, as well. So if you want to try some new ideas. And we're actually upgrading our, our website for the greens right now. So it will be changing over the next month or so. Our Jade site is up. Again, you can Google Jade, and that too is now up and live, and you've got some new and fun new ways that you can cook Asian items as mm -hmm. well. And I just have to add this one last thing before I say goodbye. It's so nice to you. interview uh, you, Jan. Um, women are few and far between in this yeah. industry, and it's wonderful to, um, to interview a woman. Well, it's an honor and a pleasure. And and eat your greens. <laughs> eat your greens. And yeah, we have a new slogan, actually. Eat your greens and you'll fit in your jeans. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Eat your jeans and fit in your greens. And thank you, Ventura <laughs> County. And thank you, Katie TV. Thank you, Katie.